Hey everyone, I am Angurag from Locofy. This is going to be an exciting video where we will explore how AI can help developers ship product faster. In this video, we will see how we can go from Figma to Pixel Perfect code using the Locofy plugin. And then we will extend it and add some functionality to it using ChatGPT and OpenAI's API endpoints. Without further ado, let's get started. So this is the app that we will be building. As you can see, this is a single screen application. Over here, we have two boxes. The first one is to collect the user input. And the second one is to show our final response. So for our response, we are actually using OpenAI's API to generate a social media post or a blog, depending upon the user's input. So for example, I will now create a social media post on the effects of climate change. I will select social media over here. Now I will click Genwick. As you can see, this not only generated a social media post for us, but it also generated some hashtags that we can use. So now what if we want to generate a blog, so we can select blog over here. Now we can click on generate. As you can see, we have generated a blog as well over here. So this is the final app that we will be building. By the end of this video, you will see how you can build this app and use AI to generate and extend your code. So this is the design file that we will be converting to code in this video. As you can see, it is a simple design. However, one thing worth mentioning is that it uses auto layout everywhere. Using auto layout, uh, we can easily adjust our designs later on, and it also makes our Figma designs responsive. So, for example, if I resize this particular window, you can see that the elements inside it are also adjusting. Same for our nav bar. Using auto layout, our designs are not only responsive in Figma, but they are also responsive when we export them using Locofy. Let's see how. So you can right click anywhere, click on plugin, then choose Locofy. So you will see that we have two main widgets in our Locofy plugin. The first is the tag layers, which I will come back to in a minute. The second is the drag and drop pre-built components. Now this widget allows us to add components from popular UI libraries such as Material UI and Chakra UI. This is a great option if you are building a design from scratch and want to use a popular UI library. The tag layers, which was the first widget, is actually the most important feature of Locofy. Using it, we can convey to our machines that this particular frame, for example, is a button and this particular box that we see over here is a checkbox. We also have the preview and the view code button. So after we make all the changes, we can click on view code and this will redirect us to the Locofy Builder where we can make the final adjustments and export our code. Using preview, you can see that Locofy is showing us a preview which is actually running on code as well. And because we are using auto layout, you can see that we have some responsiveness over here. However, since we have not used the Locofy tagging on any of these elements yet, so it does not know that this is a button, or this is a checkbox, or this is an input field. Let's see how we can do that. So let's close the preview. Now we can start with the generic button, which is right now just a frame. But using the plugin, we can convert it into a button. So we are seeing a list of tags over here. Let's choose button. So this does not belong to a UI library, so select none. We are seeing some attributes that are usually applied to a button, such as auto focus and disabled. We also have a styling and layout tab over here. Using it, we can customize how our button looks on different devices. And we can also customize the look and feel when somebody hovers it or presses it. 
Finally, we have the actions tab, which lets us configure some of the actions that you can see over here, such as open URL and change page whenever somebody clicks on the button. So this is how you can tag a button. Now let's go ahead and tag few more elements. So we have a few more elements that we can tag in the similar fashion like we tag this button. So we will start with this box over here. So we want this to be a text area. Again, we can select none. Now we are seeing some attributes specific to this particular element such as placeholder, rows, columns and other items. Now let's also tag this one. This is also a text area. Now we can also tag the checkboxes. Finally, we can tag the logout button. Now, if we go back to our preview, you can see that these design elements have been converted into fully functional components. As you can see, right. But if we go forward to responsiveness, you can see that we have some degree of responsiveness thanks to the auto layout functionality but it is not fully responsive on smaller devices so since we have used auto layout we can quickly go back to this frame over here again in our styling and layout tab we can go to 768 pixels and we can change the direction to vertical now you can see that this works very well however you will notice that the generic button seems a little out of place because on smaller devices it should be at the center or have maximum width so let's see how we can do that with the plugin so we can click on this now we can go to the tablet mode and add a margin now if we go to tablet you can see that this is central and on smaller devices also it has a margin auto property but we also want to make sure that it expands and takes this entire space so for this we can go over to our mobile and in our width over here we can change it to hundred and we can change the unit from pixel to percentage this makes sure that on smaller devices we are taking hundred percent width as you can see so this is how you can apply different layouts and different styles depending upon the screen size to all the elements present in your design file now we are ready to export our code so let me create a new project this will be a next js project i want to have typescript and for styling i will choose scalewind let's create this project now we can click on view code as you can see we recently launched the auto components feature which allows builders to create modular code and split the app into different components so they can easily maintain it it has already identified our navigation bar as a header section so let's accept this suggestion it has also identified our first input box but i don't want to implement it so we can also reject this suggestion so on the left side we have a list of our frames and right next to it we have our preview of our app and below it is the actual code that is 
to the name this particular app and on the right side we have components where we can break this designs into different components since we already saw oco components before you can see gakar header section is automatically converted into a component you can also pass in different value props and style props to it you can also view your prototype over here as you can see finally you can eager deploy or export your code so let us export our code if you have an existing project you can also export the components from over here and import them into your project but since we are starting from scratch i will import everything as you can see how quickly we were able to go from a figma design to pixel perfect production ready code in Next.js and we were also able to customize it with TypeScript and different styling options. Now let's view the export cake code. I have opened the export cake files in Visual Studio code and here you can see the folder structure. So we have a components folder with the header section and we have an index file that is our home page. And we also have a public folder that has our media assets in it. To run the project, we first need to install the dependencies. So for that, run npm i. To start the server, run npm run dev. Now we can visit localhost Creek housing. Here you can see that the app is running and it is also responsive and pixel perfect. So now we can start using ChatGPT to extend this code and add some functionality to it. So we will be using ChatGPT to write React code for us and we can start by making these two checkboxes stakeful. Right now you can see both of them are selected but I want that our user should be able to select only one at a type. So for this, go to chat GPT and write this query. As you can see, I was pretty descriptive with the query and the more descriptive you are, the better the answer will be. As you can see, it has started writing the code for us. It is also explaining the logic behind this code. In our case, we don't need to copy everything because we already have the code generated by Locofy. So we can only select the portions that we need. So let me copy this line in our app. We can paste it and we can also import few stick. We will also need this function. We have our two checkboxes over here and we can paste the properties and right now it does not have any type so let me make it again now in our application we can see that we can only select one at a time now the next thing we want to do is to add some on change listeners to our input fields over here and also add an on click listener to our button so I will show you how you can do that and run queries in conjunction in ChatGPT. So here I will ask ChatGPT to write React code to generate two text areas that are stakeful. By stakeful we mean that it will have an on change listener and a button that will have and on click handler again we will only copy the portions of code that we need and we will paste it in our app so we can generate the code and as you can see you can run queries in conjunction by providing more description and more elaborate details of exactly what you want.
So I will copy this and paste the Kicker app. Now over here, we just need to copy the properties. This will be our output field text and this will be the event handler for our jgreg bug over here. Whenever the button is clicked, you can see that we are console logging some items. So let's check this. As you can see, the function has rank and it output the first console log. And then we have the cook x values from this cook x kgas. Now that we have added some basic functionality to our app, we can now move to the OpenAI API and see how we can integrate it. So first of all, you will need an OpenAI account. After logging in, you can click over here. Then click on view API keys. Over here, I have already created a few keys, but you can create a new one and then copy it. Now we can go back to our app and create a env file. We are naming it next public API key and save it. Now since we have made changes to our environment file, we need to restart the server. Now that we have our OpenAI's API key, the final part is to call the API to help us generate social media posts and block content. But before we go any further, I want to show that OpenAI has provided us with different models which has different capabilities. So the most capable model is this one and we will tell ChatGPT to use this particular model to help us generate the content that we need. So now we will ask ChatGPT to generate the thinking and you will notice that we will be very specific with what we want. This is because the more specific we are, the better the result will be. Over here, we are also mentioning the model that we will use. We can also specify that we only want the code to run when a button is clicked. As you can see, ChatGPT has created a function for us and this function runs every time a button is clicked. In this function, it is calling the OpenAI API and it is generating a social media post over here. So we can simply copy this function and we already have our function over here. So we can paste. Now I want to make some slight adjustment to it. So instead of set post, I want this to be set text to which is our second text KDS value. We don't need this console logs anymore. Over here, I also want to make sure that our user's input is also a part of the API call. Finally, I want to add the API key over here. Now we can go back to our application and let's write a social media post on the effects of climate change. Awesome. As you can see, it generated the social media post for us as well as the hashtags. However, right now it only generates a social media post for us, but we also want it to generate a blog depending on whatever option the user has selected. So for this, we can change the prompt based on the checkbox. So our block checkbox has a value of option 2. So whenever the selected option is option 2, which is our blog over here, it should generate a block for us. 
और सिकुल जगड़े का सोशल मीडिया पोस्ट एज यू कैन सी आई चेंज द प्रॉम्प्ट सो नाउ लेट्स गो बैक टू अर ऐप एंड दिस टाइम लेट्स सेलेक्ट ब्लॉग एंड क्लिक ऑन जेगरिक तो आप यू कैन सी एक है जेगरिक का ब्लॉग फॉर अस यू कैन आल्सो इंक्रीज द कैरेक्टर काउंट ऑफ द ब्लॉग बाय चेंजिंग द वैल्यू फ्रॉम 300 टू 1000 एंड देन रीजेनरेटिंग द ब्लॉग So this is how you can generate blog or a social media post depending upon the user's input. And since this is a text area, the user can make some changes to the output and then they can copy and paste it on their blog site. So this is how we can convert our design files to pixel perfect code and also extend it using AI thanks to ChatGPT and Locofy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do comment down below how you are using AI to ship your products faster. Thanks for watching.